The greatest development in music during the Baroque period is perhaps the opera. An opera basically is just a play set to music. And operas during the Baroque period increased the public's desire for music. Opera swept Europe and had aristocratic as well as middle class listeners. The composers of operas looked back to Greek drama where every line was sung and understood by the audience and then they added emotion. This idea of every line being sung made it easy to follow and that's just called monody or recessitative. Opera began in Florence, but like I said, it spread. Jacobo Perry's Daphne was the very first opera, 1594 to 1595. Perry's Eurydice in 1600 was per first performed at a wedding um, between Francis King and Marie Medici. This opera still survives, and it's the myth of Eurydice and Orpheus. Orpheus went to the underworld, persuaded Hades to let him have his wife Eurydice back, and then he lost her again when he disregarded the instructions not to look back into the underworld before they reached the light of day. This story... Eurydice, as Perry called it, has been reproduced many, many times, but perhaps best is by Claudio Monteverde as La Orfeo. Monteverde named his opera after Orpheus. This opera by Monteverde was written for the Duke of Malta and intended for limited production, but it became wildly popular. The first opera theater was built in Florence in 1637, and by 1699, Florence had 16 theaters, and that's quite an amazing accomplishment. The audience kept demanding more and more drama and more and more spectacle until at last the music became more important than the drama. After this video you will see a link below this that gives you a synopsis of Monteverdi's Orfeo and then you can go listen and watch just a little bit of it so you can get the flavor of what Baroque opera was all about. There were two very important composers um, in Germany during the Baroque period. Handel and Bach, and you probably have heard of these two. If not them, at least their, some of their music will be quite familiar to you when you hear it. So, in Germany, music was really the biggest recipient of Baroque innovation. Operas were performed, as well as public performances of religious works took hold there in musical form. Handel was German, like I said, and he moved to England where he became immensely popular. He wrote operas, orchestral works, and oratorios, which is just a sacred text set to music. Perhaps his most famous one is Messiah. And again, there'll be a place after this video for you to listen to Messiah, and I'm sure that you will recognize the part I'm having you listen to is the Hallelujah Chorus from this particular oratorio, and it's very very famous. This Messiah was originally performed in 1742 in Dublin, Ireland. Bach was a German as well. His parents died when he was 10 years old and he left home at 15 to become a choir boy. In 1707 he got married for the first time. He had seven children, four of whom died in infancy. In 1720, his wife died, and in 1721, he remarried and had 13 more children. In 1723, he moved to Leipzig and became the music director for a church there. He wrote everything besides opera. Many believe he is best known for the fugue. 
He was very concerned with expressing his faith and religious emotions. Many of his works celebrate life or meditate upon death. In 1749, he had an operation for his eyes, and in 1750, he died. The idea behind a fugue is that one theme moves from voice to voice or instrument to instrument until all are going simultaneously. So as is true with Baroque, it was very, very emotionally charged. Though Bach was a prolific religious composer, he is perhaps best known for the Brandenburg Concertos, which were written for private entertainment. There are three movements in each of the concertos, fast, slow, and fast. You will be able to listen um, after this slideshow again to um, a piece of one of the Brandenburg concertos. The first movement that's fast uses all of the instruments that the particular concerto was written for. All the music, all the instruments will start off together each one breaks out and then rejoins the other. In the second movement, it's slower. Things slow down a little bit. It becomes more tranquil and meditative. And then in the third movement, um, it build, excitement builds again, and, and the music becomes much more energetic. So they were very well planned out, and they were designed to appeal to the audiences emotionally. Again, like Bach's fugues, he was very interested in raising the emotions of his audience, just like all these Baroque artists were. 